Hello everybody, in this experiment we will use oscillators and oscilloscopes, so I will explain them to you. Please listen carefully. This is the oscillator. And this is the oscilloscope. First, I will explain how to operate the oscillator. The oscillator is a device that produces AC electrical signals. It is powered by an outlet coming down from the ceiling. Look at the rear side of the oscillator. This is the power switch. This section explains how to change the frequency setting, the most important function of an oscillator. To change the frequency, press the frequency button. Look at the LCD panel. The one that blinks in the panel is the cursor. Press the arrow keys to bring the cursor to the digit you want to change. Currently, the cursor is in the first place. Pressing the left arrow key once will move the cursor to the tenth place, and pressing the left arrow key once more will move the cursor to the hundredth place. Pressing the right arrow key moves the cursor down to the tenth place, then to the first place, then to the first decimal place, and so on. For the clarity, the cursor is indicated by a red underline. Turn the dial labeled Modify to the right to increase the value. Turning it to the left will decrease the value. In this oscillator operation, use the arrow keys to move the cursor, and use the Modify dial to change the settings of other values and units. When the value exceeds 9, the digit is automatically carried up. And similarly, when the value is below zero, the digit will be carried down. You can change the unit of measure by moving the cursor further to the right of the value and turning the modify dial. Note, however, that this will only change the display unit, not the actual frequency. For example, 1000 Hz changes to 1 kHz, 0.001 MHz, and 1 million millihertz. If you want to output an AC signal of 6.5 kHz, for example, the unit is Hz, use the arrow keys to move the cursor to the thousandth place. Turn the modify dial to set the number to 6. Then press the right arrow key to move the cursor to the hundredth place, and use the dial to set the number to 5. Use this function button to change the waveform. The waveform is displayed on the LCD panel as a symbol or in English. Turn the dial to change the waveform. This is the sine wave. This is the square wave. This is the triangle wave, and this is the direct current. Next, let's change the voltage of the signal. Press this button to change the voltage. Amp means amplitude, and OFS means offset. In the LCD panel, A represents the amplitude, and O represents the offset. As with frequency, Use the arrow keys to move the cursor left and right, and use the modify dial to move the value up or down. The unit VPP refers to peak-to-peak -to -peak voltage, or the difference between the maximum and minimum values of a voltage waveform. Note that this is different from the amplitude used in natural science. One volt amplitude of sine wave AC corresponds to two volts peak-to-peak. You can change the offset by pressing this button again, but for this experiment, we will not change the offset, so please leave it at zero. If you change the offset by mistake, be sure to reset it to zero. Here is how to reset all settings. If you change the settings too much and can't change them back by yourself, Press the special button and then the trigger clear button to reset to the initial state. The output button allows you to switch the output on and off. 
The current status is indicated in the lower right corner of the LCD panel as on or off. This is the basic usage of the oscillator. Next, I will explain the operation of the oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is a device for displaying electrical signal waveforms on a screen. The horizontal axis shows time and the vertical axis shows voltage. The AC signal generated by the oscillator is output from the connector labeled function out. This signal is fed to the oscilloscope's input connector. For connection, use a cable with banana plugs. You will need a conversion connector. Connect the same color to each other. The switches on the front panel can be divided into the four functions shown on the screen. We will explain the functions as you operate them. Press the power switch to turn it on, and press it again to turn it off. Turn this knob to move the waveform up and down. Turn this knob to the right to move the waveform to the right, and turn it to the left to move it to the left. The current voltage, time, and other setting values are displayed here. Currently, the yellow line shows the waveform of channel 1, and in this example, the setting is 200 mV. This indicates that one vertical division in the grid corresponds to this voltage. In this example, the amplitude of the voltage is three divisions. So 200 times 3 equals 600 millivolts. The vertical axis is set by the volt division switch. It can be set separately for channel 1 and channel 2. Turning the switch to the right decreases the voltage value per division, and turning it to the left increases it. The smaller the value per square, the larger the waveform. The horizontal axis and the time axis are set to 100 microseconds per division. The period of the signal is 10 divisions. So 100 times 10 equals 1000 microseconds, or 1 millisecond. The time axis is set by the time division switch. Turning it to the right shortens the time per division and turning it to the left lengthens it. Next, let's look at coupling setting. The coupling settings can be made separately for channel 1 and channel 2. To change the coupling for channel 1, press the button for channel 1. This symbol is for AC, this for DC, and this for ground. Normally, you leave it at AC, but if you want to know where the zero volt is, you can set it to ground. The zero volt is the reference for the voltage of an electrical signal. Next, let's talk about the trigger. The trigger function is used to synchronize the signal cycle with the cycle of the LCD display. If the input signal and the screen display are not synchronized, the waveform will not stop. When the trigger function is activated, the waveform can be stopped and viewed. For detailed trigger settings, press this menu button. Set the source of the signal you want to observe to channel 1 or channel 2. Set the mode to auto or normal. Use the trigger level knob to adjust the threshold. For clarity, the red line indicates the trigger level. When the signal voltage crosses the trigger level, the trigger is applied. 
The area in the middle of the screen shows the voltage at the time the trigger is applied. Turn the trigger level knob to the right to increase the trigger level. Can you see that the voltage at the time of triggering is moving to the positive side? On the other hand, if you turn the trigger level knob to the left, the trigger level will go down and the voltage at the center of the waveform screen will become negative. Press the slope and coupling button to switch to the detailed setting screen. Pressing the slope button toggles whether the trigger should be based on crossing the threshold from bottom to top or from top to bottom. Notice the change in the waveform. Bottom to top. Top to bottom. This is the basic usage of the oscillator and oscilloscope. Now, let's output a 1 kHz sine wave signal from the oscillator and display it on the oscilloscope. The first step in preparing the oscilloscope is to set up the trigger. First, press the trigger menu button to set the trigger. The trigger type should be edge. The source is channel 1 this time and the mode is set to auto. First set the coupling to ground and adjust the position of the vertical axis, which corresponds to the voltage of 0 volts. 0 volts is the reference voltage for electrical signals. If it is off vertically, use the position knob to adjust it to the center of the screen. After that, set the coupling to AC. The next step is to set the oscillator. By default, the output of this model is set to a sine wave with a frequency of 1 kHz and a voltage of 1 volt peak to peak. First, check the frequency and waveform. The next step is to set the voltage. The voltage should be set to 2 volts peak to peak. Press the AMP, OFS button, move the cursor to the first position, and turn the dial to set the value to 2. When the setting is complete, press the output button to turn on the oscillator output. You should now see a sine wave on the screen. If you don't see it, check the coupling. The coupling may still be grounded. If the amplitude on the screen is small, turn this switch to the right. Conversely, if the amplitude is too large and extends beyond the screen, turn the switch to the left. Use this switch to set the time axis. In this case, the input is 1 kHz, so what is the appropriate value? Think about it. The setting is now complete. If you want to stop the screen temporarily for observation, press the Run Stop button. Press it again to start again. Insert a flash memory into the USB connector and press the Hard Copy button to save the waveform as an image. Finally, be sure to turn off the instrument and unplug it from the power outlet when the experiment is over.